What's up boys and girls? This video is for somebody who needs to know what kind of steel to buy, AKA what kind of knife should I buy? What's the best kind of knife? What's the best kind of blade? Well, this video is for you and I make videos like this all the time. So if you do like videos like this, make sure to like, and if you really are cool, you'll subscribe. So first let's do a pocket check. We got the SOG fixed blade with a little shitty paracord. I cannot seem to get these knots on good. I'm trying, guys. Uh, we got our Gerber gear. China made, China. So mad Gerber gear outsources to China. But whatever. I think they even manufacture in China. Comment down below if they do. I got my Texas, Texas bracelet, NATO, paracord. My case has paracord. I'm like a paracord guy. And then my shoe knife has paracord too. All right, now that we got that done, you guys know what I'm carrying on my on my walk. You know, I was trying to get the steps in. So you need to know what kind of knife should you go for. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I hate to break your little heart. There's no such thing as a perfect knife. There's no best knife. There's a right steel and a right kind of knife for the job. Like, you're not going to go chop lumber and be like, oh, let me pull out a folding blade. No, you're probably gonna want an ax, right? You, I don't know, you're doing food prep. You wanna cut potatoes and apples. You're probably gonna want something that has really good edge retention. You're not gonna want something that is just extremely tough, right? You don't, you're not, you're not gonna cut your fucking apple with an ax, right? Hmm. I don't know, maybe some of you guys would. You guys are crazy. So, you gotta ask yourself, what exactly are you looking for? And that is the most important thing. For me, I, I kind of want to be well-rounded. So I have a 110 buck and it's really nice. Uh, it's 420 high carbon. Mm, that's a good budget steel, but it's very tough. It's very good on corrosion. It's, cor uh, it's corrosion resistance. Hey, hey bird, shut the hell up. I'm trying to make a video. So it's good on corrosion resistance, but it doesn't hold a great edge. Well, it holds a decent edge, but it's not, it doesn't have great edge retention, right? That's where people would shit on it and say, eh. But if you guys know buck knives, then you would know that they're affordable. They're American made, most of them, some of them, not all of them, you know? And uh, that's another video. I could go on a rant all day long about how I hate China shit and buy on the American stuff, but you know what? There are some nice stuff from China, and at the end of the day, there's just nothing you can do. Affordability, I mean. So I'm not going to sit here and shit on you if you go and buy a K-Bar, you know, mini or a K-Bar full size for $30. It's pretty sharp. It's pretty decent, right? Or if you go and you buy an Artisan, you get something like the Accelerator, right? Like, I'm not going to knock you. But I am going to tell you, what are you looking for and what's your budget? All right, so let's get into steels. Now that you know what you should, what, you, what your objective is, right? Now let's go over steels. So ask yourself, do you want a good budget, friendly? Like, like, are you on a budget? Do you want a budget steel? Then you need to look for good budget steels. And I'm going to post some of the charts on this sporadically through uh this video so you guys could see that screenshot it whatever and that'll help you a lot uh a good budget steel like i said i would just go with 420 high carbon you can especially from buck they have the best boss heat treatment they get the most out of it they treat it like it's a fine steel I personally think if you're gonna if you're gonna get into knives, the best way to start is with buck knives. That's what I did. You don't have to be like me. There's a lot of other stuff. Uh, if you don't want to spend sixty five dollars and you just want like a thirty dollar blade, well, like I said, you can go with K bar. Buck makes a Spitfire for forty five dollars. It's really nice. Uh, Smith and Wesson makes some okay sharp shit. That's a little smaller, right? But when it comes to steel and blade quality, I think a 420 high carbon would be good. There's a couple other, but that's what I've done. That's what I've used. And it seems to be good because like I said, it's really tough. It's really good at corrosion resistance. 
and they make it pretty sharp and, and it's easy to sharpen that's another thing too don't go buying a really nice blade off the rip uh like i will probably be doing <laughs> unless you're really gonna dig the, uh unless you're gonna dig really deep because uh, some of those like s90 and uh s110 and s15 like some of those are just really hard to sharpen and last thing you want to do is spend all that money on a nice knife and you fuck it up because you just you didn't know how so that's why i've been buying i bought some 420 stuff and shit because i figured i'd try on buck the reason why i'm i'm not affiliated with buck but the reason why i would say to buy a buck knife is because most of them are made in america you'll figure out like the classic stuff is there are some imports but what I like about Buck, even if you get an import, is they give you a lifetime guarantee. And they have something called a uh, spa. Y'all see me licking my lips. My mouth is so dry. <laughs> but y'all, they, they have a lifetime guarantee on their knife. So they have a thing called a spa. And literally for like $6, you can send your knife. And then you pay for shipping, obviously. So it's like $20. But you can send your knife and they will polish it, resharpen it, everything. And if your blade's beat, they'll just put a whole brand new blade on your knife. So if you're really trying to budget and you want something that's going to last forever, yo, a buck 10 is great. And if it's too big, you could go a buck 12, right? And they have other ones you just... Mm, God, I wish I had some gum. <laughs> you could just go and look on their website. Highly recommend. And like I said, for steel, 420 high carbon. I just, I'm just going to tell you to do that because I think. Now, let's say you have some money to play with and you're looking at maybe getting a Benchmade or Spyderco or something that's just all around better. Well, you came to the right place. What I'm gonna tell you right now, a lot of people might not like, a lot of people will like. The research I've done and what I've seen is to have a high end, like a high end, like a good, not premium, but like a, a high end blade. If you're trying to have something that's good quality that nobody's gonna shit on you, like 420, you know, cause people will shit on you if you have 420. Some people will say it's the strongest shit ever and tell you a bunch of war stories about them and the granddad skinning elk with it, right? Hey, I own the knife, I love it, right? But not everybody's here for that. Some people just want something easy to put in their pocket, right? I'm gonna tell you S30V, S35VN, and S45VN. I think that's 40 uh, VN. I'm, I don't know the difference to be honest, but uh, S30 is sharper than both of them. But the other two, 35 and 45, I'm pretty sure they are uh, they are a little tougher, but not by much. And they're all decent at corrosion, right? So that's why people get those because. It's a good standard blade. It's sharp. You can hold an edge good. You can, uh, it can be slicey depending on what kind. And that's another thing. If you want a really slicey blade, like you have to look at stuff. Like if you go get a bench made and you get like a bug out or a 940, those might not be as slicey as compared to like a paramilitary two or a pair three from Spider Co. So a lot of it is like the angle of the blade. It's not always just the material. So like I said in the beginning, make sure you know what your objective is right and at the end of this if you're still watching i said at the end of this i'm gonna tell you what i recommend for you okay so anyway you got those and then if you want to go better than that that's when you could start looking at like m390 uh you can look at s90v those all hold really good edges but they're not tough. So you want something super sharp, super slicey. Those are great. And when people say like edge retention, it just means like how long before it's dull and you have to sharpen it again, right? And how long does it last and how sharp? So, and those are harder to sharpen. So I wouldn't recommend those as your first one. And then you got ball stuff that's like Direx, whatever, and S15 and M4 and... uh magna cut now the guy who made that chart i forget his name really cool channel 
Uh, I'm using his screenshot for what he put. Now, I think like, you know, CMP crew wear and a couple of those are kind of put in different spots. Like M4 is literally as good as, as crew wear, uh, crew, what's it called? It's called CMP crew wear or CPM crew wear is just as good as M4. M4, I think is a little sharper, but the crew wear is tougher and better at corrosion. So I don't know why he put one over the other. He's more experienced, so hey, I'm sure he could explain that. But a small channel like mine, he's probably not going to see it. Because that guy makes a million videos and probably makes good money. You're coming to the real guy. The guy who's actually walking around with his knife. If he gets it scratched up, it is what it is. If he has to cut some shit, it is what it is. And, it, you know, he has fucking fun. I mean, look at me, dude. I'm literally carrying a fucking shitty Cabela's blade. A shitty Cabela's blade. Like, this thing is beat the shit already. And I don't know. I like it, right? And that's where we're going to go at now with the video is those, all those steels are great. Let me put this back in. All those steels are great, right? But I'm going to give you some recommendations. If you really don't give a shit, right? Like, you do not care at all about, you just want a knife on you for the cut something or maybe self-defense. I'm gonna tell you right now, a fixed blade, something that does not have to fold open or close is gonna be better for self-defense and it's going to be better for like woodwork, like axes and, and, and big fixed blades are gonna be better for cutting shit down and they're more stronger by nature. Folding blade is more precision, cutting maybe some food or cutting paper or cutting boxes or you know what I mean? And with fixed blades, you got to watch out because, like, I have to keep this on my neck. Yeah, it looks cool, but I can't, in my state, I can't have a blade over three inches concealed. And if it's a fixed blade, I cannot have it concealed at all unless I have a concealed license, which I don't. I went through the process and then I, I just never submitted the app. I did everything but that. I'm, I hate myself. But it was like three years ago. You live and you learn. I'll do it again. But... A fixed blade's cool for that if you want self-defense. There's other videos. I'll probably make one of why you should pick a, uh, a fixed blade over that. But if you're going to do some folding blades, if you don't care, I'd go to Cabela's. I'd go to a Walmart. Hear me out, for real. I'd go to Cabela's. I'd go to Walmart. And I would just see what they have. If you can find something that's like a D2 steel, run with it. You know, if you find something crappy like this, like that knife I just showed you, was five dollars you you do not need a bunch of money like there's a cabela setup they give you a nice light at 75 lumis little battery it takes a little triple a and it's pretty bright for just walking my dogs right it does the job it's cute it's little and they have different colors for it and it came with that knife for ten dollars so i want you guys when you come to my channel to not always feel like you necessarily have to spend a bunch of money to do EDC. I know like it's a hard time. I'm broke as shit right now trying to stay positive, right? And I make these videos because they help me to vent and kind of uh relate to you guys, right? So uh I will tell you right, right now, now that uh the best knife oh nice nice the best knife to have is the one that is on you. Okay. So if it's self-defense, it doesn't really matter what blade it is. It's going to stab somebody, right? Now, if you're really using your blade, well, then going to a Walmart and all of that could work and it's cheap. But in the long run, it's going to, it's going to work against you, right? So you're going to want better quality. So this part of the video is going to be for the guys who, who actually want some quality. Now I'm gonna hand out a bunch of different uh, different knives you can look at. If you go on my channel and you go onto the community, I have a bunch of knives that I posted. Any one of those are gonna be awesome. So I'd say if you're willing to spend 150 to like 250 and you want something that's, listen, I know it sounds crazy, but are you talking about something that you buy and it works for a couple weeks and then it's useless and it barely works and it's dull and you don't want to sharpen it? Or do you want to spend money that, hey, this knife lasted for like 10 years and I never sharpened it? Or maybe I sent it back one time? Okay. That's why I told you how to go a buck because if you go a buck, 
you can send it to get sharpened and you don't have to even know anything and you can go you can get them custom made or go in there and get a web exclusive and they make it now for 20 high carbon uh s30v or magnet cut and you're getting the bosch treatment on them with lifetime guarantee i'm getting a custom 110 built so i'm a buck guy i like them but you don't have to do that so if you're not going to go with buck you could always look at Benchmade or Spyderco. And I know people are gonna be like, oh my God, they're so expensive. Oh my God, they're so expensive. But you get what you pay for. Right now, you can go and buy a bug out, mini, very small 2.8 or 2.9 inch blade, which in my state of Delaware, I can legally carry and hide it. Listen, you could buy that thing and it'd be as big as this. A bug out mini is as big as this little guy, little dude, man. And I went to a store yesterday and it was, they had a, the red and black one for $153. If you go online, you uh, Amazon free shipping prime, you can go get the Stormtrooper color for 170. And if you want like a, a cool color, you can pay like 180 190 right and then they have a carbon fiber one that's s90v for 280 i want to get that one really bad but i'm not telling you guys to do that or you can go on spider co and they have really good s30v uh paramilitary 2 manix they got a bunch of really nice budget ones that i found that were under a hundred dollars that i was like i didn't know spider co made some of these knives for under a hundred dollars and it's like spider co has like a very strong uh like what they expect from their knives is very high quality so they won't send out some bullshit so you're gonna get a knife that's really nice with them i thought about getting one of them too like 80 bucks like if you guys see on my channel in a couple weeks you're probably gonna say wow i didn't know you could get a spider co and be a part of the team you know, for that cheap. Like you can't go and find a Benchmade bug out or any of that for that, right? But here's the names, Benchmade bug out, Benchmade bug out mini, Benchmade 940 Osborne. And I would recommend just going with a S30V to get started. Seems like S35 and S45 aren't much better. They, they're a better in little things, but S30 is a little sharper so. Hey, that's my opinion. I would stay away from 940, I mean, S90V and uh, maybe you could do a Magna Cut or M4, right? Or M M uh, M390, like they're all good, but you should get your game, you should get your foot in the door. I don't wanna make this video too long. So I'm gonna try to do a recap for the people who still watched. And if you are watching, I really appreciate you. You don't have to like or subscribe. Everybody always says that. Sometimes I even say it's a habit, but you know, if you enjoyed this video, just you watching it is means enough to me, so thank you. So, like we we're gonna go over a recap. So, and these videos are raw too. I don't sit here and try to edit them and make them pretty anymore. I just try to give you the truth. I'm like your bro to me, right? Like if we're sitting in a car, smoking a cigarette or smoking a blunt or drinking a beer or having a cigar. It's just brother to brother talking. That's what these videos are. It's not me trying to act like I'm the coolest guy. So go over, ask yourself, what are you looking for? What is the objective? Is it a small, sleek, comfortable pocket knife that you don't think about? Or is it just a workhorse, something that you're just cutting boxes and zip ties all day with? Or is it something that you're going camping with, right? And you want to go and you're going to cut wood and you might even use it as a hammer sometimes because, you know, whatever. Ask yourself that. Then once you get to that part where you know what you're looking for, because there's always a different knife, there's always a different tool for a different job. So then say, this is the kind of knife I want. Okay. Then ask yourself, what kind of blade are you looking for? What do you need? Do you need a tough blade? Do you need a really slicey sharp blade? But if you're getting that, you're going to lose some of that toughness, right? Do you know how to sharpen a blade too? Are you good at that? Do you have the stuff to do that and the skills required to do that? Because if you don't, 
then buying a really slicey blade is probably going to work against you more than for you okay don't look at how good uh how slicey or how much edge edge retention you're getting with a blade and think that that's the best all end all because you'll find a lot of people who hate s90v who don't like a lot of those sharp blades because they're weak and they chip and they're not good with uh some of them aren't good with like corrosion, right? Like you cut something, you, you, you take it out a day later and it's rusty. And you're like, what the fuck is this? Like this expensive blade, right? So get just get that out of your mind. If you're going to start with something premium or uh, at least good quality, S30V, S35V, S45VN. Those are great. If you want a good budget, something that, hey, you want to keep and hold on to that can hold an edge, that's easy to sharp to maybe start. You want to start learning how to sharpen, but you don't want to hurt something, but you want something that, hey, even if you don't, it's a lifetime guarantee. You can go get it resharpened by the manufacturer or they'll send you a new knife or a new blade and it do all the work for you. Go to Buck. Go just buy a 420 high carbon. $100 you can get S30V as a web exclusive with them. $10 off and I think free shipping. I just, I don't see there being a better knife for that price. And then if you're really budgeting, you know, buy a K-Bar. Uh, you can buy Smith & Wesson, a SOG. You can go and even crappy Gerber gear. Like you can go and you can just, uh, you know, buy one of those online bullshits or if you really don't give a shit go to walmart go to cabela's go somewhere and just find yourself a little a little pocket knife and use that if you want a knife that is not necessarily going to cut everything and needs to be super super sharp but you want something that's like a multi-tool look into a swiss army knife victor knox or victor i always fuck it up they're the best you can you can get ones now with magnet cut. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, it's crazy. But I'd get one of those because at the end of the day, it could be a screwdriver. They'll have scissors. They'll have a nail filer, a toothpick, tweezers, like pliers, all this shit you can buy on them. And those are great. If this video was helpful, you know, comment down below. Uh, what do you think about it? And comment what I missed. Also... I'm just a normal guy making videos, so don't bust my balls too hard or bust my balls and tell me how much you hate me, but make sure it's really good. And uh, I hope this video at least steered you in the right direction. Like I said, just know what you're looking for before you spend a bunch of money. And if you're going to spend a bunch of money, make sure you're getting something that's quality and well-rounded. And just remember, just because something's really sharp does not mean it's really tough. You're, you you can't have really tough, really sharp, and really good at corrosion resistance. You're giving one of those up every time. So know what you're looking for, guys. Till next time, peace. Also, I'm going to put a bunch of photos of recommendations that I think you should go for. So yeah.